Well, today is a very exciting day because I've just bought my dream four-wheel drive. That's right, another project four-wheel drive, sight unseen. It's from Mr. Land Cruiser, so that'll give you a bit of a hint to what I just bought. It's a HJ47, so a 1984 model. It's the last of the two H40 series utes. Very, very excited to have one of these because my first memories as a kid four-wheel drive, my grandfather actually had one of these. He put 750,000 Ks on that thing. All he ever did was change a clutch in it. Very, very, very special vehicle. I can't wait to have a look at this thing. I'm on the way there now. I'm just gonna hopefully get it, pick it up today. Paul did say to bring a couple of tools with me. So I've got the back of the 79 full of tools. I'm gonna have a look at this thing, eh? Check it out. If there's one place in Australia that knows 40 series, it's gotta be Mr. Land Cruiser. They not only have an enormous stock of 40 series parts, but they're also experts at restorations and full custom rebuilds. So I'm feeling pretty confident they'll have found me a good vehicle. This place is crazy. If you love old Toyotas, this place is like, literally like a candy store for a big kid. Look at that, so many. Which one is mine is a big question. Ooh, there's some nice ones over there. All right, let's go see this thing, eh? Big 47. This is Paul, one of the owners of Mr. Land Cruiser, who arranged the purchase of my 40. Hey, mate. Good to see you again. Yeah, likewise, mate. So many 40s here. Yeah, a lot going on at the moment. There's always a lot going on. I know, yeah. absolutely, mate. Now, so excited today. So excited. Um, is it over that way? It's over this way. Here for, let's go have a look. Let's go have a look, eh? Hey? Come on. I'll tell you what, there's some pretty flashy 47s parked around the yard. Some of them might need a little bit of love, but if mine looks half as good as this, I'm dead set onto a winner. Oh, have a go of these ones, mate. Nice, eh? Hey? Oh, 47. 47. It's this one, isn't it? It's not, this is a customer, it's not this uh, one. That one? Uh, that's not yours either. That's not? Not that one. Look at how gorgeous this one is. Yeah, she's sweet. Oh, look at this one in the back here. Absolute cracker, it's this one, isn't it? Sweet, isn't it? But no, it's not this one. Someone oh. else owns this. Oh, that's gorgeous. Sorry, mate. Yeah, right, Yours eh? is pretty special, though, so we'll go over a closer look. Okay, cool, cool. Sure enough, my new vehicle is waiting for me under this tarp, which I'm really hoping is just there for show and not to keep the water out. This is the one, mate. This is it? This is it. This is wow. a HJ47, 1984, the end of the line for the 40 series. Well, let's see, um, did you mind? Yeah, see, yeah, let's have a look. See what we're dealing with yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, right. This is yours, mate. Wow. This is what you asked for. Wow. Yeah, right. Oh, you've got a bit to do. Renovator's delight. <laughs> no, look at it. It's, it's, you can tell it's actually in really good, Nick. Oh, she's straight. It's she's very straight left. body. You don't usually see them like this. It's obviously, you can tell it's been sitting in a shed for a long time. All the paint's still on the engine. Yeah. It hasn't cooked it. A bit of well, show and tell, mate. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, my plan was today, it might be a little bit ambitious. I was hoping to drive this thing. What do you Want to give her a go? <laughs> I'm going to try, mate. I've brought a bunch of tools with me. Yeah, well, maybe I, you want to um, start it first, make sure she runs. And yeah, I'll... Then we'll do some, uh, check the clutch brakes. Check all that. May need so, a wheel or two on it. All right, mate. I well, appreciate that. Yeah, good luck here, eh? Where do good I start? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I'm not going to lie. I'm suddenly feeling a lot less confident about getting this thing running today. The engine in this 40 series probably hasn't run in about 20 years. The previous owner stripped it apart and it's been sitting in a shed in Mount Isa, half in parts ever since. It's gonna be an absolute miracle if we can get this old girl running again, especially to try and do it today. <laughs> you better wish me luck. Well, first up, I thought it was a bit of a stitch up. I thought this vehicle is, you know, is sitting on bit blocks of wood. I mean, it hasn't started in 20 years. There's no chance that this would be the right vehicle to even start a project with. But the more I look at it and look up close, it's actually in, perfect condition. I mean, yeah, it's missing a few panels, but everything is in mint condition. Like all the bodywork is, it's got a bit of surface rust and you're gonna get that in an old truck that's been out and especially it's been in a shed for a long time. But because it's been a country car, it hasn't had a lot of salt air sort of going on there. So there's no deep rust in it. So the firewall, everything is really good. In the dash as well, the dash is all, it's a one piece dash. It's all together. Um, this is a, we've got the model with the taco, which is very well sought after. All the switches on the dash, they've even got the original radio. And I don't know if you can believe it or not, but it's 96,000 kilometers on this dash. This is a cool, cool 40 series. So look, I'm gonna have to um, get right into it. I think the first plan of attack is just to get this vehicle rolling. So I'm gonna try and find some tires. There's, there's stacks of tires around here. So I'm just gonna find a couple that match and um, get this up rolling. We'll get it out, have a good look at it. And um, then I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna work on just getting that engine started. If I can get that engine started, we've got half a chance of being able to drive this thing around today. So, all right, let's get into it. 
Like I mentioned before, there's pretty much no better place to be trying to track down spare 40 series parts than the Mr. Land Cruiser yard. And once I've got the farm truck on a jack, I'm off to find a set of tyres. And soon enough I've found the perfect set. A pair of Goodyear cheese cutters on split rims. How good is that? Righto, it's looking better already. It's rolling on all four tyres. Now, I guess I'm gonna have a look at the engine, try and get that started. Keep in mind, this is a 2H engine, so what's so cool about these engines are they're the most basic of all the diesel engines. So, it needs air, and it needs fuel. They're the only two things it's need. It doesn't even need a battery. There's no 12 volt solenoid on the pump. It's all mechanical. So um, you could even essentially push start this without a battery and get this going. Until it runs out of fuel, it'll continue running. That's what's so cool about these. That's why these engines are so legendary. So first things first, I just want to get some new oil for it, change the filters around, and then we'll work on trying to get this thing started. The first task, of course, is to drop the old oil out. Now, normally, you'd get the vehicle running so it gets the temperature. It makes the oil so much easier to get out. But, of course, this one doesn't run. So I'm just going to drop the oil out cold. How's that? I was half expecting this oil to be just nothing more than a couple of litres of black sludge. But it's actually reasonably clean, which gives me pretty, pretty good sort of hope that this engine's going to fire over. It's been well looked after, despite being sitting for so long. Now the next step of course is to change over the oil filter before I go putting in any new oil. Alright, brand new oil filter. Just going to get some of the old oil here and just go around that little seal. Now you definitely want to change the oil filter every time you change the oil in any vehicle really, but especially one that's been sitting for so long. You don't know any contaminants, bits of metal, anything that's been through the engine is going to end up in one of these, so it's just safer to put a new filter in. Um, we've got some brand new oil as well, so give it a bit of a birthday and then um, we're going to be on the way to getting this thing ready to start. Just going to put in a little bit of uh, Castrol GDX in here. This is a 2050. Um, that's what you typically run in an older diesel engine, something a bit thicker than what you'd run in a modern engine. With about nine litres of new oil in, it's time for a brand new fuel filter. Again, you just want to make sure you change all the filters on. It's a good start. Look, it'd probably start, <laughs> no one at Toyota's, it'd probably start with the old stuff in there, but just, we just don't know how long this has been sitting for. Out with the old and in with the new. How easy is that? And that's the thing with an old Land Cruiser, they're just so easy to work on. Even a mug like me can make it look half easy. Just checking inside the radiator. There is definitely fluid, it doesn't look like coolant. <laughs> it looks like water, but that'll do. That's all we need to start it with anyway. Yep, of course later on we'll get some proper cooling in, but for now I just want to see this thing run. Now for this step I've got the other owner of Mr Land Cruiser, Richard, on hand to help me out. He's a guru when it comes to just about everything electrical and mechanical. And in fact, he actually built a fair portion of the Dirty 30. He's one guy you want on your side, especially when you're working with old Toyotas. Sweet. Oh, get it up on the guard there, eh? Yeah, we're getting a bit serious now. We've got some diesel. And the first step, I suppose, is to try and prime the system up. That's eh? it, mate. Yeah, we'll jerry-rig it first, so we're not coming from the tank just yet. Yep. So we know we're getting diesel and all that. So yep. a little boat pump. Running diesel direct from a jerry can is one of the easiest ways to get the engine going, especially if you don't have the fuel system connected properly. This way we can see how it's running. Shall I just crack that nipple? Yep, crack the, crack the one on the, on the filter there. We'll get the fuel up here first. Yeah. And then we'll start cranking it, getting it up to the injectors. Yep, yep, yep. So this right here is the first step of trying to prime the fuel system. With the nipple cracked, we can push the air out of the system and see when the diesel has reached a filter. It must be close, only a little fuel filter. Oh, there, we go. there we go, there we go, there we go, it's a boy, there's no doubt about it. Alright, we'll put this nipple back in. Now, like I said before, it's technically possible to start this engine without a battery, but that would mean push start in, it would be very hard to do, especially when it hasn't started in so long. So, we're going to drop a battery into the bay to make things easier. Should be good, it says good on the top. It says good on the top, <laughs> must be alright. Alright, negative, that's our negative, even though yep. it's red, it's just earth off to the, to the motor. See, so love what the farmers do, man, just to keep them going. A bit of red on the negative. A bit of red on the negative, mate. Whatever you got, I suppose. Right. So All let's right. get a 17mm spanner. We'll crack those injectors off. And what we'll be doing, we'll be cranking just to see the little pulse of diesel coming out. Yeah. Then we'll uh, tighten them back up. Like with the fuel filter, cracking the injectors bleeds any of the last air from the system. Then we can try and crank the old girl over. The key's in it. Keys Don't in even it. know if it works, man. Very far. I'll hold this. <laughs> Whoa. Sweet. You gonna go for it? Just let us know when the when the fuel starts to come out the injectors. Yep. yep. 
Yeah, looking for fuel, look at it. Yeah, we got, we got fuel, we got fuel. Wait till the air bubbles stop. Yeah, we got air bubbles coming out the top. I reckon that'll go now, would you reckon? Yeah, I think so, that sounds pretty healthy. The first bang, you can hear that motor, it wants to turn over. We'll tighten those injectors up now. We've got fuel down on the rail. How good's that? As soon as we turn that key, oh, sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Maybe it's been 20 years since this thing's actually fired in anger. That's just such a good sign. You know, that's that's how Toyota really became legends in the 80s and, and even before that. Yeah, they, they just made things to last. Like, these are not throwaway motors, the 2H. They're just so basic, and that's why people love them, especially me. You can put some fuel, put some air, give it a little bit of battery, and bang, that wanted to kick over. We'll tighten these up now, and I reckon it'll probably fire first go. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty confident again. As Richard tightens up those injectors, we're almost ready to see if after 20 years in a shed, the big 2H will roar into life. Give it some glow. So what Richard's doing here is just getting a little bit of power to those glow plugs and mm. um, trying to complete that glow plug circuit. Uh, these two H's have glow plugs. You need that before you can turn them over just to fire the glow up. Yeah, definitely. And make sure that there's a lot of different voltages on these glow plugs. If they're 6.5 volts and you go straight to the glows, you will blow the ends off them. Righto, so, yeah. righto. So you're going via that. I'm going to go via the super glow system. So these act as a resistor to bring the voltage down. <laughs> All right. Give a crank. You got the throttle? Yep, we can do that. Ready? Yep. Hands away. Yep. Come on. It wants to. It wants to. I'm gonna glide that again. Yeah, it's glue again. Do you wanna have a go? Yeah, righto. Yeah, there's a little spark there. Yeah, hold it for a bit, hold it for a bit. Yeah. Hold it for a bit. Okay. Right, it wants to start, you can tell it's just not quite turning over just yet, which I don't blame it. Might just crack those injectors one more time just to make sure there's no air in them. Yep. We're going back to the injectors just in case there's a few pockets of air left in the system. Fingers crossed it works this time. Yeah. Yeah. I'll crank it. As we're tightening up the injectors again, Richard's found another possible cause for the issue, thanks to a home done mod from the previous owner. Because look, they've re... Ah, uh, righto. Well, Richard's just peeked it that the farmer, or whoever might have owned this last, has actually bypassed um, the, the glow system here and just gone straight off to the rail. So we'll try this on here, on this green one. Hopefully, this one is gonna be a winner. All right, try that. Yeah, good job, mate. Nice one. Yes. Listen to that. Nice. Check the smoke, man. Woo. Smoke. Does she idle? Yeah. Like a dream. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than half the Toyotas I do own. <laughs> I think the water pump might be seized up, mate. Oh, yeah. yeah. The fan's not spinning. Nah. How's that? That's amazing. The water pump's probably seized up. The fan's not spinning, but that motor, big 2H, just kicked in the light. It sounds so good too. It does, man, it does. Real testament to the 2H, eh? Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, better, that's better. I forgot to actually tighten one of the injectors, and it was still started, and, and fuel was just popping out of that injector. So this, look at that, that sound is even better now. How good, she's running. Up next, we'll try and get that fan spinning. See if we can dislodge it. But, oh, yeah, look. Bosh. Fire out. I still think we need to replace it, but. Yeah, I'd reckon so. Look, it probably got about two KP org trips left in it, but. <laughs> I reckon we get away with tightening that belt and she'll be good to go. <laughs> she be good to run. Yeah, good to that. <laughs> Try that. Yes. Look at that. <laughs> Give it a little gun. Oh. There's leaves and the stuff is flying out. <laughs> How's that? The How mighty 2H. That? that is so cool. Well, I'm absolutely stoked. To get this thing up and running in one day is just amazing. But there's still a lot of work to be done if I want to be driving this thing today. 
The next step is to get some fuel in the tank. And using the same system as before, we're trying to get the fuel into the line and then hook up the tank to the engine. So we're going to use the boat pump to try and bleed that system. So I've connected the fuel tank up to the pump. Um, I'm going to try and start it again. Hopefully it doesn't need glowing and there's no air in those lines. That's it. Perfect. It really is as easy as that. Now, the only way to kill this engine is um, it's got an edict uh, little rod here. So it basically cuts the uh, supply of fuel off to the pump. So you just pull that little lever and then the old 2H stops. Um, obviously you wire that up. Um, but for the moment, it's about as cowboy as it gets. And it just shows you there's nothing to these engines. It's so simple. And that's what we love about them. All right, I'm gonna get it looking like a vehicle now. Um, some cosmetic stuff so I can actually take this in for a drive. I'll tell you what, I absolutely love these old trucks and just how everything literally bolts back together. You just bolt it on and off you go. And speaking of, I'm gonna quickly hook up the air box and air filter. Of course, I'll get a new filter later, but for now, I better just check how much dirt is in the air box. Something's been living in there, look. Ah. Having at least had a partial clean, it's a simple job to bolt it all in and hook it up for a test run. Well, it's a bit bodgy, but I'm basically just using whatever parts are on the back of the tray here. I don't have the right size bolts for some of these, and um, there should be a little clip on the end, but basically I'm just doing the bare minimum so I can get this vehicle running, and um, later on when I get home in the shed, I'll really go through it, put all new everything through it. I can't wait for that little bit, and my plan is with this vehicle just to drive it, just to drive it how it is. That's nearly getting to the point where I can drive this thing. I can put a bonnet on and make it look a bit prettier. Um, maybe a door, who knows? But we're almost at the stage we can drive this. How exciting. I'm pretty spoiled for choice here when it comes to doors. But for now, the priority is to find a working latch with a handle and also one with minimal rust. Not the exact same colour. This one's like an early beige colour. This one's obviously the white. But it's got all the internal mechs and everything, which is what you want. I'll put that up into place. It might be short a couple of bolts, but for now, it'll do. Okay, time to put a bonnet on this beast, and again, there's no shortage of bonnets around here. Alright, plenty to choose from. This one's not the right colour, but it'll do. Yep, you can tell it must be getting close to beer o'clock, because I'm taking the first one from the top of the pile. Ready? Yep. Oh, I can bought one. There we go, it's starting to really look like a real 47 at the moment. Bonnets on, we've got doors on. Yeah, they're different colours, but you know, it's an old farm truck and um, still looks pretty cool to me. Now, behind the scenes, we've actually checked the clutch and the brakes, and I reckon this old farm truck is scrubbing up an absolute treat. Now, there's just one last thing left to do, is to turn it on and try and take it for a spin. Well, no, super excited, we're just about to take it for its first drive. Paul and Richard already jumped in. Bench seat, it's gonna be tight, but who cares? Let's get this thing fired up and um, for its first drive. All right, boys. Let's go for a bit. Look at that. You wouldn't want to be big boys, would you? No. Look at that. This actually reminds me of my childhood. I yeah. was the dude in the middle, though. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm a bit big for that sport. Yeah. All right, ready? Can't miss out. Three, two, one. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Listen to that. We're on. Yes. We're on. Look at it go. First time he's driving then. This is rad. Ain't done this oh, for a while. This is so cool. Well, there you go. What a day. I'm so excited to be driving my very own 47 series. Ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted one of these trucks. How good is this? It feels so fun to drive. It's just, I don't know, there's something about old trucks that just so cool. Yeah, definitely. So cool. I get, I get why you guys are so passionate about it. Oh, yeah, definitely. You just fall in love with it. You gave up careers. Everything's proper. Like, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. real. You feel everything, didn't you? Steel dash. Yeah, like, steel yeah. everything. It's just how a four wheel drive should be built. Oh, you've got the bug, mate. You've got the bug. Yeah. What a rig. <laughs> what a rig. Well, there you go, folks. How's that for a one day build? 
This is absolutely the car of my dreams. I've always wanted a 47 series. Now, of course, I love the Dirty 30. Nothing will take its place, but I'm so excited to be able to share this day with you and for all the work ahead. Well, there you go. What a massive day on the tools. And um, to get this vehicle running is just a huge feat in its own, but it's a real testimony to old Land Cruisers. I mean, these things are bulletproof. They're legendary for very good reason. I mean, this thing has probably sat in a shed for the majority of its life and um, to be trucked up here and put together with basic parts. I think I used three different spanners for the whole day. I think it was a 12, a 10, and maybe a 17. But you know, these things are very simple. That's what I like about it. This is grassroots four wheel drive. And this is where it all sort of came from. Now, a big thank you to Richard and Paul from Mr. Land Cruiser. Now these guys, you know, they found this vehicle. They, they told me how good it was. I trusted them, bought it sight unseen. And um, as you can see, it's an absolute gem. Now, what's in store for this truck? Well, I've got a lot of plans for it. Firstly, I want to get it registered. So a lot of work's going to go into this to get it registered. I mean, I want to go right through it and replace all the bearings, the brakes, um, maybe a new suspension for it and all the rest of it, but I'm not going to modify it. Um, I want to keep it really stock and um, just enjoy it for what it is, an old 47 series. And at the end of the day, that's the reason why I, was, I really wanted one. I wanted one that was almost like my grandfather's vehicle. And this one here, it's a different color. I mean, it's all sorts of different colors at the moment, but it's the right vehicle. It's the exact right model, and uh, I just can't wait to drive it around. So the big question I want to ask you guys is when I do get it registered, where do you think I should take it? Let us know in the comments below, and make sure you subscribe to 4 Wheel Drive 24-7, the best 4 Wheel Driving channel on YouTube. Now, if you don't mind me, I'm just gonna have another beer, sit in that driver's seat, and just admire this 47 for a little bit longer. If you love today's show, you don't wanna miss what we've got in store for you for next week. Fingers crossed. Oh, 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 that'll do. <laughs> right, turn it off before it stops. Next Thursday is part one of our Bush Mechanic Challenge, where we buy each other insanely cheap four wheel drives, spend 24 hours building them, before putting them to the test yeah. on Australia's toughest four wheel drive tracks. There'll be backyard mods, zero dollar budget fixes, track breakages, bush mechanics and a whole lot of action as we push these rigs to the absolute limit around the Glasshouse yeah. Mountains. Well done, what a drive. <laughs> Don't miss episode one of this huge adventure next Thursday on YouTube. What a weapon. Oh, oh my God. <laughs>